If you're struggling with maternity in nursing school or ANCLUS, these are the videos you want to watch. Video number 10, dealing with maternity nursing ANCLUS review concepts that will help you in nursing school and the ANCLUS. Let's get to it. First question, challenging, but not focus on the buzzword. And let's note, fetal heart rate deceleration that mirror uterine contraction. That is the buzzword. Which action the nurse should take? What do you think? Which action the nurse should take? Before you answer the question, how do you answer questions? Step back. Don't pick an answer. Go for the buzzword so that you understand what the examiner is asking you. The question say the fetal heart rate. Why do that put mirror? Mirror uterine contraction. That means if this is uterine contraction, the fetal heart rate is going to do the same. It's going to mirror it. And the fetal heart rate deceleration, right? Not acceleration. The fetal heart rate deceleration mirroring maternal contraction. That means if mommy contract, the baby heart rate go down. Mommy stop, the baby heart rate stop. This is what it means. Which action the net should take? Contraction, there is deceleration, but the deceleration is mirroring what the mommy is doing. What kind of deceleration is this? Before you answer the question, you have to define it. It, is this early deceleration? Is this late deceleration? Is this variable deceleration? And after you define it, you can answer the question. If this is early deceleration, what do you expect? Assess for cord prolapse, place the client in the left side, continue to monitor labor progression, or suspect severe fetal hemolysis. If this late deceleration, what do you expect? If this Variable deceleration, what do you expect? A deceleration that mirror that of the uterine contraction is an early deceleration. Therefore, I'm not going to look for cord prolapse because if I write my bell chop, I know that cord prolapse, right? Usually, what would it present with? It present with variable deceleration. Therefore, this is wrong. Place the client on the left side. Mostly, I'm talking about placenta insufficiency, and this is usually who present as what? Late deceleration. This is not proper. Continue to monitor labor progression. It has to be what? Early deceleration, which is what this is showing. Therefore, I'm going to monitor that. Suspect severe fetal hemolysis. This is dinosaur problem. It does not indicate that. These are all concepts. Every question, there's going to be a concept. I want you to take a pen and paper and write it down. The concept here is what? You have to understand what? Deceleration, mirroring that of uterine contraction is what? An early deceleration. So the right answer is number three. And that is the key here. Early deceleration is a benign. It's due to head compression. And therefore, number three is our right answer. And this reviews the client fetal monitoring strips and note moderate variability. What do you know about moderate variability? That is the buzzword. Don't answer the question until you figure out what is moderate variability. Every question, try to come out with your own answer. What action should the next take? What's the best action? You have to understand what is moderate variability. If you understand it, do you think we need to give the patient oxygen? Do you think we need to place the client on the left side? Do you think we need to monitor the client? Do you think we need to notify the air care provider? The word variability means go up and down. And moderate is within a certain range, at least six to like 25. That means the baby heart rate goes up and down by that time. A minimal variability is a bad thing. No variability is also a bad thing. A moderate one means good. A baby heart rate should go up and down, up and down at the certain range. And therefore, moderate variability is a good thing. Therefore, what do you think we should do? Just monitor the kid. 
That's all. That's the key. Like I said, every question, there's a concept. And I want you to write it so that you can master maternity in nursing school and the endless moderate variability is reassuring. If it's reassuring, then I should continue to monitor. And as I says, a pregnant client in the second trimester, what do you expect in second trimester? Which findings should be reported? This is what we call physiological changes in the pregnant lady. This is video number 10. This is the series that you will help you understand maternity. Linear nagra on the abdomen, should that concern you? Supine hypotension, when I lay flat, my blood pressure goes down when I lay flat. Is there a problem? Plus two PD edema in the ankles after what? Prolonged standing and a diastolic bama. What do you think? Second trimester lady has the following, second trimester lady with the following features. What will concern you? These are expected findings that you have to master them, but which one do you think is not an expected finding or which one should concern you? Linear nagra is normal in pregnancy. When you lay flat, when you're pregnant, your blood pressure goes down. That's why we want you to lay on your side. So it's an expected finding. Teach them not to lay on their back. Just because I say hypotension is when they lay flat, not normally. And then pity edema. This is not preeclampsia because after prolonged standing, just by elimination, you know this is right. A systolic mama in a pregnant lady is normal because of the increase in fluid volume or increase in blood volume. A diastolic mama is unexpected. It's a bad problem. Indicate cardiac problem. And I want you to write it down. Every time they give you a question on a pregnant lady and you hear a diastolic mama, know that this is a problem. And that is your right answer. Concept-based maternity nursing, endless review to help you master this in nursing school and endless. Diastolic mama is a pathological problem. And therefore, number four is your right answer. This is talking about movement of the baby. And it's teaching a client at 28 weeks gestation about fetal movement. Which statement indicate correct understanding? What do you know about fetal movement? Concept you have to know. I should feel at least 10 movements in 12 hours. I will call my provider if I don't feel 10 movements within two hours. If I feel the baby move less than three times per day, I should lay down and wait. Kick count should only be done after 36 weeks. It's normal if the baby doesn't move for an entire day. Ladies and gentlemen, nurses, what do you think we should do? Which of this is correct? Correct understanding. 10 movement in 12 hours. I don't feel the baby in 10 movement within two hours. And then less than three times per day. All of this, what do you think? Put down your answer, stop the video, answer it on your own, and then see the way I'm going to answer it. And then you can take the concept from there. I can tell you for the anklets, at least 10 movements in two hours is the best. Anything else is no good. 10 movement in two hours. Once again, 10 movement in two hours. Therefore, I should feel at least 10 movement in 12 hours. No, the idea is 10 movement in two hours. I will call my provider if I don't feel 10 movement within two hours. That is good. If I feel the baby move less than three times per day, I should lay down. You should call because look at number two. Number two said 10 movement within two hours. If I don't get them, I'm calling the provider. But you said three times, you're going to lay down and let things take its course. No. Kick count should only be done after 36 weeks. That's not make sense. You should continue counting every day. It's normal if the baby doesn't move for an entire day. That's wrong. Therefore, there's only one answer. It's a selector apply. If you know only one, pick it. If you pick more than one, you get it right. Therefore, only one answer is the right answer. A client at 28 weeks asks about vaccines. Which should the nurse recommend? This is vaccine. This is uh, some of the things you have to teach the patient. This is what the ankle is like. They love this. A pregnant client at 30, a pregnant client at 28 weeks asks about vaccines. Which should the nurse recommend? 
selected apply. The anglers love these anticipatory guidelines, things you teach them, because it shows that you know the content. Tdap, MMR, varicella, influenza, and HPV. What do you think? Pregnant lady is immunocompromised. You should not give them live vaccine. Which of this is a live vaccine? That is the concept. What is your answer? Put it down. Number five. Five questions. I know you get five out of five. Put down your answer. Let me see what you got. But the concept is MMR and a varicella are contraindicated. HPV is also contraindicated. Influenza inactivated one is the IM. is good. The flu uh, nasal one is not good. Therefore, Tdap and influenza is the best answer. MMR, varicella, and HPV are active. This is concept question, and it's good to know it because you have to teach the parent. A client with the history of thrombophibitis asks about what? contraception. Which method is safest? Think about it. Thrombophibitis, that means you develop clot in the past. Clot in the past with inflammation. It does not matter. So far as it's in the vein, it develops some clot. What contraception should you recommend for the patient? The key is estrogen is a bad one. It causes DVT. Therefore, anything that has estrogen in it, you should avoid it. If you have a history of DVT, that is the concept. That is what you should focus on. Based on that, what do you think is your right answer? Combined oral contraception, yes, estrogen. Progesterone only, no estrogen. Estrogen patch, yes, estrogen in it. Vaginal estrogen ring, yes, estrogen. Concept, concept, concept. And you know, number two is the right answer. That's all we're doing. This question is about knowing the concept. You can use it to answer any question. I want you to write it down as a note and keep on going back to them and reading them. You see that maternity will be like a cake. And this is teaching about what? cervical cancer screening. What is the concept? Cervical cancer screening. What do you know about it? Take that what you know and look at the answer choice. If they say something wrong, ignore it. With statement by the client, indicate correct understanding. I will begin pap smear at the age of 21, regardless whether I'm sexually active or not. Pap smear are done yearly after the age 30. If I'm not sexually active, I will not need a pap smear. What do you think? This you know. I know you know. It's in the question form. Figure it out, right? Typical cancer screening, you do it 21 years. That's when you begin. And you do it every three years if it's normal. The key concept here is cervical cancer screening is done at 21 years, no matter your sexual activity or not. The other one are traps. If you're sexually active at early age, your risk of cervical cancer increase. If you smoke, your risk of cervical cancer increase. HPV, HPV vaccine does not prevent you from having cervical cancer. You still need screening if vaccination is a preventive. Pars may are not done yearly after 30 years, three years. Therefore, the right answer is number one. And this is very, very important that you know about it. A client in the third trimester report of shortening of breath when in laying flat. Which instruction is best? This is an expected in pregnancy. Use extra pillow when resting. You may be developing preeclampsia. This indicates preterm labor. You should restrict fluid at bedtime. What do you think in this situation? The third trimester with the gravid uterus, they lay flat, they have shortness of breath, and they call you. What do you tell them? It's clinical common sense question that you have to make it easy for yourself. What? You have a gravid uterus. If you lay flat, you become hypotensive, shortness of breath. What do you tell them? Unexpected finding. There's no indication you have to pick preeclampsia because it's a bad problem where it does not answer the question. There's no indication that she's having contraction. It can be preterm labor. Fluid restriction is not good. Therefore, one is the right answer. A client at nine weeks report morning nausea. This is the same thing. These questions are made it straightforward so that we can use some common sense to answer them and say, look, this is it. I've no making it harder or not. Morning nausea will help with the nausea. It happens in the morning. Which recommendation is appropriate? First trimester. Nausea, well, 
Eat three large meal. Well, it's like a reflux. Reflux patients should not be eating three large meal. Drink fluid with the meal to promote digestion. You're going to have nausea more. Crackers, come on, man, before getting out of bed. Something to prevent you from having nausea. I've worked protein in the morning. Protein is the best one that is supposed to have. Therefore, crackers is the key. These are the things you have to teach the patient. And the last question. This is not difficult, but this is to trap you. And then she's teaching the client what? In second trimester, about expected cardiovascular changes. Think about it. If you think about this question, it will be easy. What statement indicate understanding? Well, when you're pregnant, you are now have more volume. Your blood volume goes up. Your heart rate goes up. Your hematocrit may go down, right? Your blood pressure alternate, go back and forth and lay down stabilize. Therefore, my blood pressure will rise steadily throughout pregnancy. It's not going to remain the same. My heart rate may increase by 10 to 15 beats per minute. It may sound like, right, I should expect my blood volume to decrease. Well, you have another baby, more blood. My cardiac output remains the same as before pregnancy. You have more blood. It's not going to remain the same. The key is your blood pressure and your heart rate and your cardiac uh, volume is going to change. And what kind of changes you should expect? Your heart rate is going to increase by 10 to 15. Your blood volume about 40 to 50%. That's a lot. And your cardiac output will increase. Therefore, number two is your right answer. 10 questions. Thank you for watching. And please practice question, questions and answers. I expect explanation, maternity nursing for nursing school and the NCLEX. Thank you for watching. If you need more, subscribe to Adapt and Class for more content like that. Thank you very much.